So this is the million dollar question right now, and that's which is the BTK inhibitor that you would use. Um, so there's two issues related to that. One is when does the toxicity happen and with which agent is the toxicity the most pronounced? So again, we have limited head-to-head -head data between the two inhibitors and there's obviously some design uniqueness with each of the trials. So without getting into the technicalities of that, it appears that acalabrutinib and xanabrutinib are better tolerated as compared to abrutinib. So patients who are on abrutinib tend to have a higher incidence of atrial fibrillation, possibly ventricular arrhythmias and hypertension. So essentially all the cardiovascular issues appear to be higher with the abrutinib use. Similarly, if you look at the bleeding risks, there may be a slight trend to a higher incidence of bleeding with abrutinib. Uh, but it's not a big difference between the other two. So I feel that that's a class effect. Uh, in terms of efficacy, they all appear to be fairly similar. So if I have to choose, I would choose the least toxic drug. And at this point, it appears that acalabrutinib and xanabrutinib are the two agents that are less toxic than abrutinib. And that's generally our preference. Uh, we try to um, minimize the toxicity in our patients. Um, and that's why we try to choose the agent that has the least toxicity. The other question that arises is that if, what about you use a time-limited approach and maybe if you just use it for 12 months um, in various regimens uh, with regards to the BTK inhibitors, you may not have those issues. And the answer is, if you look at the incidence of all the major cardiovascular side effects from abrutinib, uh, it typically happens in the first six to 12 months. And actually, the longer you go on these agents, the less likely you are to discontinue based on this toxicity of, this, of the agent. So most of the problems are happening in the first six to 12 months, maybe the first year or two. After that, it's pretty easy to take those drugs. So even a short term or a limited time treatment um, appears to be not the solution to overcome the toxicities that you see with this agent, especially abrutinib, especially in patients above 70. So in this, in this era where we are fortunately spoiled by all the choices, it's great for our patients that we have access to all of these agents. It appears that both acalabrutinib and xanabrutinib are possibly better tolerated. They have less toxicity and seems to have equivalent efficacy as compared to abrutinib, so obviously you would go with the less toxic agent.